Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us today for another one of the um, webinars on the um, Crest Threat Intelligence Professionals um, Conference. Um, so throughout the day, we'll be having lots of webinars, and uh, this one I'll be handing over in a second to your presenter, Paul Mansfield, who will be talking about Cloud on the Horizon how threat actors are targeting the cloud. So before I um, hand over to Paul, just a, good, a quick one about qu any questions that you might have of Paul right at the end. Um, you can type those questions in the question pane. Please feel free to do that throughout the presentation and we'll get as many of those asked for you today. Any others, I'm, I'm sure we could, we could pop over to Paul and he will come back to you with an answer. Okay then, so um, with I'm going to now be quiet and so you can get listening to Paul. So thank you very much, Paul, and over to you. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I, I haven't done many of these sorts of things before, so just a bit of background about myself. I am, um, I've worked for Accenture. I, um, I think my career path that kind of brought me here started at the National Crime Agency, um, where I was an investigator for several years. Um, ended up in the National Cyber Crime Unit, and then I moved to Barclays Bank as a cyber threat intelligence analyst, um, where I kind of monitored cyber criminal underground for threats to, to Barclays and the wider financial services industry, and then. Uh, moved to Accenture just under a couple of years ago into a sim sort of similar role, but looking at threats across uh, all verticals, industries, um, taking more a hands-on role and um, having a presence myself on, on the dark web and getting first-hand look at um, what sort of tools and services are being sold on the underground, uh, who's selling them, what's trending, uh, kind of breaking out intelligence for, for clients and writing reports and things like that. So, And that's what led me to carry out some research into uh, threats to the cloud and i appreciate it's a very broad subject it's kind of like saying threats to the internet um, but so i've tried to focus this through the lens of what threat actors uh, on the underground are talking about and and selling um, so i'm gonna uh, turn my camera off now just so you can fully see the slide um, so, and another point to note is um, if you have any um, questions at the end, like I say, my background isn't um, in cloud security, but if you have any kind of technical questions about securing the cloud or similar, please still ask. Um, I can take it away. I've got access to a lot of colleagues who know about who, who know a lot about that kind of thing. So I'll 100% be able to take it away and find a, an SME to answer it. Um, So there's many advantages to the cloud. Give this, I've just list, listed a few there. Um, data protection, data migration, cost efficiencies, improved performance. Um, and last year, the COVID-19 pandemic really kind of fast forwarded migrations to the cloud, which was fairly slowly happening anyway, but the sudden enforced work from home conditions and the need for businesses to suddenly be more agile and scalable meant this had to be this had to be rushed and it's conditions like these that really make cyber criminals sit up and take notice and so this presentation looks at six of the main ways we've observed threat actors of all skill levels targeting cloud environments based on our, our monitoring of the cyber criminal underground so to gain access to corporate network environments hosted on the cloud threat actors are targeting Logging credentials the same way they still have a credentials. So, using social engineering, phishing, smishing, social media scams, um, various types of malware such as information stealers. And there's a, a bunch of different ways these get traded, but I want to concentrate on two main platforms which have been flourishing for the past year or so um, Russian market and Genesis market. Um, so, that screenshot at the top there is, is taken from one log, if you like, from Russian market. Uh, so from left to right there, you can see it's the, the data was stolen using an information sealer called Vidar. Um, the victim is based in India. Um, in the middle there, there's a sample of just a few of the the sites that um, the buyer can get access to the 
username and password and I've just sort of highlighted one there it's signin.aws.amazon.com um, and it's got some other bits like uh, date uploaded and they're all available for really cheap um, it's generally under ten dollars per victim so I looked at how many new entries have been added to the Russian market just between the 1st of January and the end of February um, which included credentials from one of the three big cloud service providers so AWS, Google, Microsoft and there were over nine and a half thousand new logs. Um, and just to show you how this could be a concern for companies, I had a closer look at a few and it didn't take me long to come across one log dated 19th of January uh, for a victim based in Maryland, USA. And this, this log contained a, a credentials for a variety of services and analysis of the URLs contained within the log indicated that the victim likely work for a local IT service management company. And in the same log, there were multiple sets of credentials for the cloud and remote desktop services um, that you can see on the slide there. So the purchaser of this log with knowledge of how to evade fraud detection measures and of how to use these credentials has, has a good chance of accessing the corporate cloud environment of the, the IT service management company. And there's lots of other examples like that to be found. And the same kind of credentials can be found on Genesis Market. However, I think this one needs to be taken even more seriously. Um, anyone purchasing from this market not, not only gets access to all sets of compromised credentials on the victim machine, but also access to a bespoke Genesis browser plugin designed to um, imitate the, the kind of dig digital fingerprint of the victim, uh, making it easier to bypass fraud detection systems. So this makes it much more expensive than those on Russian market. You can see here on the left, uh, that's a screenshot from one take uh, that was uploaded on the 26th of February and it costs $75. Um, and you can also see the victims in located in Poland. Uh, they get access to 251 different resources from stolen from two browsers. Um, there's a partial IP address. And on the right there is one of those resources. So that's login credentials for Google Cloud, which become available after you, you purchase the whole thing. And the, so the dark web is awash with compromised credentials, which are being bought and sold on these and many other platforms like including Telegram, Discord, and other marketplaces. But I think what sets Genesis and Russian market apart is they come with stolen cookies. Uh, and the associated cookie in these logs assists the buyer in re replicating the victim behavior when logging into a service. And actors are been known to be targeting the cloud in particular with this. And um, at the bottom there, is, you can see it's 13th of January, CISA, the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency alert, which mentions incidents where threat actors bypass multi-factor authentication using stolen cookies to compromise cloud service accounts. So for these reasons, we're confident that um, underground marketplaces like Russian Market and Genesis are offering actors a way into a corporation's cloud environment. Um, compromised access keys and secrets offer um, an alternative to login credentials when breaching corporate systems, um, providing actors with authentication into internal systems if, if they use them correctly. Um, they often don't even need to be stolen. Um, search of the internet using free tools often throws up exposed keys on sites like Pastebin and GitHub. Um, and there's also malware out there targeting access keys, particularly these days for the purposes of crypto jacking. Now that cryptocurrency is kind of a bit crazy, uh, I'll talk a bit more about that later. Um, access keys, might, they might not provide the more widespread and longer term access provided by user account credentials as keys tend to be changed or discarded more regularly. But we know from some high profile examples that these keys are they're attractive to criminals in their use as part of a, a tool set they can use to authenticate into a cloud environment and 
from the work their way around. And on the dark web XSS forum, which is a bit of a goldmine for people like me finding experienced black hat hackers, just like writing in-depth articles on on how they go about their business. Um, one actor shared a story about how they managed to infiltrate and hack a twenty billion dollar corporation, which they did name, but obviously I won't name here. Um, using free services and stolen AWS keys. And the actor detailed how <coughs> searching for dot priv and dot key files belonging to the victim led to the discovery of the AWS secret token and, and private SSH key of a it was a web application used by a startup company previously acquired by the larger company. So that screenshot on the right is the screenshot shared in the article. And they specify that the AWS keys were left in some Python scripts written by a developer, and that's how they found them. Um, and that gave them super user rights to a virtual AWS server instance. And it's, it's a very in-depth article from there, but the app to use open source tools to perform reconnaissance and move laterally and escalate privilege, privileges and eventually connect to the main production server as root using the private SSH key. So we've all known supply chain compromise has been a serious um, cybersecurity concern for, for some time now. But it was brought into sharp focus recently with the, the SolarWinds attack. Um, and one of the takeaways from that was the lengths these sophisticated threat actors were going to to get access to cloud environments. Um, Microsoft released a, a report detailing that how after gaining access to the victim networks, the attackers then attempted to move from on-premises access to cloud resources by uh, abusing trust in, in federated authentication environments. Um, particularly through the use of SAML or security assertion market language and then access protected data. Um, so that this kind of high, this highly organized and sophisticated approach shows it shows the value these actors are putting on accessing sensitive data stored in the cloud and this method, although it's, it's not, I don't think it's new, it's, it's piqued the interest of other threat actors who aim to target cloud environments and we've seen huge amounts of chatter among actors looking to share similar knowledge. Many ransomware gangs have been they've been really successful since early 2020 and this has kind of given them the, the time and the resources to move towards more complicated supply chain attacks to breach their victims. Um, so in a kind of reverse of the SolarWinds situation there were well, that's, that was where threat actors can breach the supplier to get access to the cloud. Uh, ransomware gangs have, have targeted cloud service providers themselves in supply chain attacks to get access to multiple victims. Um, in the middle of last year, one was one example of a cloud service provider being breached, which hit the news, and um, threat actors stole data and deployed ransomware, affecting, I think it was well over 100 of their clients in multiple countries. Um, and then by the end of last year, there were numerous proposed consumer class action lawsuits against the cloud service provider. So, um, and, and additionally, from from our from our own research, we've seen numerous examples of um, nefarious network access sellers advertising for sale access to networks of, of cloud service providers, and they kind of they make efforts to point this out in their adverts as they're they're aware of the rewards of a successful attack. Um, so the kind of the, the widespread and long lasting damage of attacks like this um and the solar winds um it's only going to encourage advanced cyber criminals to to further target cloud environments and providers so vulnerabilities um so cloud service providers usually rapidly patch known vulnerabilities without requiring much customer interaction. Um, however, when cloud services do involve the customer and managing, managing the software oversight, it can be challenging due to the, the complexity of com cloud environments and um, the rapid rate of change of cloud technology. So 
if you do if you do a google search you can find numerous examples of security researchers um, mostly responsibly disclosing vulnerabilities affecting cloud services um, i think just last week google cloud announced the results of their cloud bug bounty program showing that there are bugs and that researchers are using using the program to responsibly disclose them um, and alongside this is a wealth of research on how to exploit vulnerabilities now one thing one thing i observed which i thought was very pertinent recently was an interview with a, a self-described lot bit ransomware operator um, where the actor was quoted as saying in relation to to how they breach some organizations um the quote on the top left that we use white hat research against them as soon as a cve is published we take advantage of it because it takes a long time for people to patch um this that's obviously not a great surprise but it's the first time i've seen it openly discussed in a, in a kind of public setting and our, our research kind of shows that threat actors are really keen to share and discuss information like this with a view to taking advantage of unpatched vulnerabilities um, and obviously this isn't only a problem that affects the cloud but we've we've seen reputable factors on reputable forums discussing uh, cloud vulnerability exploits um, particularly in depth um, and the rest of the slide there are titles of white hat research articles shared by one threat actor on the XSS start web forum um, and again this is one of many examples um, so kind of despite warnings in a lot of these articles saying they're for educational purposes only it's it's highly likely that threat actors, especially on forums populated with technically skilled and well-resourced members such as XSS, then they're using these techniques for nefarious purposes. Uh, so misconfigurations are at the, on the blight of cloud environments. It's um, a big topic, but um, misconfigured cloud infrastructure can it can expose data or resources to the public internet and a failure to implement encryption or mfa can allow access access to cloud rate tools and data and assets or systems um, for threat actors there's an assortment of free tools available on sites like github um, and services like shodan or even just simply the use of google docs um, not to mention a huge assortment of bespoke hacking tools available on the dark web um, which make it pretty easy to scan the internet for for misconfigured systems. Um, stories of, of data breaches resulting from misconfigured cloud environments regularly appear in the media. We've observed further examples of, of, of threat actors advertising data for sale on dark web marketplaces where they, they specify the data was obtained from unprotected, unprotected cloud environments. And one of these is prolific compromised data trader shiny hunters who um, they've been responsible for sharing billions of compromised records from a huge number of data breaches and is known to prefer taking advantage of, of misconfigurations um, particularly exposed AWS S3 buckets um, and we see countless other examples of fractured advertising stolen data taken from, from S3 buckets um, <coughs> I think Shiny Hunter seems to have just reappeared this week, in fact, after um, a short absence, and he's posted sample data from uh, a new victim demanding a ransom from them, or the rest of the data will be released, which is it's worrying as Shiny Hunter in the past has just largely sort of sold or given away breaches. Um, and threat, threat actors, are, they're increasingly targeting the cloud for crypto jacking, um, mining for cryptocurrency, can be expensive it um, can drastically increase data use and electricity bills and degrade hardware performance um, and a threat and a threat actor can reduce operational investment costs by using a victim infrastructure for free which becomes especially attractive when the price of cryptocurrency is high which it is now um, and there's a threat a threat actor group oops sorry uh, throughout the group um, called Team TNT, who've been particularly active in this field, um, 
scan, they scan the internet for exposed AWS credentials and um, misconfigured Docker platforms uh, in order to use um, compromised cloud infrastructure to mine for cryptocurrency. And I'll finish on one that's um, not necessarily a problem for cloud environments over any other target, but it's definitely worth a mention uh, inside a threat. Um, for cloud environments in particular, though, it's, it's a serious concern considering the, the volumes and sensitivity of the, the data processed and stored in the cloud. Um, and there's some high profile examples. Uh, in 2019, there was, I think, credit application data of over 100 million people belonging to one uh, financial institution was stolen from a, a rented cloud data server by a former systems engineer employee of the cloud service provider. Um, and there were <clears throat> reports last month as well that inside a cloud data theft was a, a real problem in the healthcare sector at the moment. Um, and in 2019, there was a, a poll of cybersecurity professionals that found half of them believed detecting inside threats has become more difficult since moving to the cloud. So it might it might be that the problem is worse than we think. We're just not detecting it sufficiently. Um, but inside of recruitment, is, it's more likely to be discussed on private channels, so it's not something that's easy to get sight of. Um, we know it happens, but we, we occasionally see something on more exclusive forums, like you can see in the slide. Um, in December, we saw a threat to advertise for insiders at just large companies and included um, software as a service and hosting in the preferred list of, of company types. So not specifically requesting insiders that cloud service providers, but targeting them under the umbrella of kind of large online companies, which um, looking at the wording of the advert could suggest this is with the aim of uh, maybe a widespread supply chain compromise or a ransomware attack. So these are all big subjects to tackle on their own. Um, I won't I won't go back and list all the things you can do to mitigate them here. I did address them in um, a blog I wrote a couple of weeks ago on this, which you can you can look up if you like the titles on the left there. Uh, and there's another good blog written by a colleague of mine called The Importance of Cloud Security, which gives some really good advice on cloud security best practices. Um, but I think the more important message for the purposes of this presentation is that um, as companies kind of continue to migrate their operations to the cloud, criminals are going to increasingly view the cloud as an attractive target for criminal and, and espionage operations. So I'll just finish by saying that the proactive reconnaissance of, of the dark web can, it can help shine a light on many of these active threats, allowing organizations to kind of get, get in front of a, a potential compromise. Um, and it should also help you remain current with the latest tactics, techniques, and procedures uh, discussed on dark web forums and using, using the information to guide cloud security controls and hardening measures. Um, it, might, it might not be your first port of call when thinking about cloud security, but implementing cloud security programs specific to cloud protection and, and integrating threat intelligence feeds designed to provide indications and warnings of, of cyber threat activity should be included as, as one of your key cloud security best practices um, to help you get full value from your, from your cloud investments. And that's the end of the presentation. Are we happy to take any questions? That's great. Thank you, Paul, for that really interesting um, presentation. And yes, um, we've had a few questions in, so um, I will fire those over to you now. Um, one of the questions that we are getting in most of these presentations, are you happy to share these slides with the attendees today? Yes, yeah, that's no problem. 
Excellent, lovely. So everyone that's asked that question, we will get those out to you, no problem. So um, one of the questions that's come in is, are any recommendations on integrating threat intelligence feeds to AWS uh, natively? That's a good question. I think I'm going to have to just revert back to what I said at the beginning. I, that's not a, like a sort of attempt and answer, but I think it would be much better for me to take that one away. And I'll definitely be able to find someone who can answer that uh, more thoroughly than I can. Um, if, you, if you're able to send that to me and, and provide me with contact details, and I can, oh, yeah, I don't think my background is sufficient to, to answer that properly. Excellent. So if, if that person could just um, pop in either the question pane or chat that they're happy for me to uh, share their details with Paul, um, we can we can send that over to you and obviously he can get an answer over to you for that one. No problem. Um, so one of the other questions that's come in. So what have you observed threat actors doing once they gain access to a cloud environment? Uh, well, uh, lots of things. So I think the biggest one's probably data theft. Um, so there's there's all sorts of different types of that. So I guess ransomware is the big one. We've seen lots of these big ransomware gangs uh, specifically pointing out on their, their kind of name and shame websites that they operate, that they are targeting their cloud environments and seeking out the most sensitive data and using that for extortion purposes. Um, opportunistic data sellers. So there's a forum called Ray Forums, which is sort of specialises in um, people trading stolen data. Lots of different like cloud-specific stuff on there. Um, all the way up to cyber espionage groups. I think there's one called Cloud Hopper. Who, if you Google them, you can they they were targeting the cloud for for, for sensitive data purposes. Um, I think the most up and coming ones probably crypto jacking. I think with the Cryptocurrency as it is at the moment, that's just exploded the last six months or so. Um, and then just selling the access is a, is a popular one. There's a whole kind of ecosystem opened up over the last year or so with people just specializing in getting access to these cloud environments and then advertising the sale um, because they just want quick money and they'll sell it to people who know what they're doing with it. Um, and probably lastly, uh, hosting, just hosting their own criminal operations. So I think criminals have realized that they can use the cloud themselves to scale their own operations and um, also to uh, blend in with victim activity to help them kind of stay under the radar. And that, I hope that answers the question. Great, thank you very much, Paul. So say, if there are any add-ons to a question that you've asked, then please feel free to pop that into the question pane and um, we can put that across to Paul. So another one that's that's coming, Paul, is um, what do you think the outlook is for threat actor activity targeting the cloud based on your research? Um, unfortunately, I feel like it's probably gonna get worse before it gets better, I think. I sort of already touched upon it, but I think nation state actors will look at the success of the solar winds hack uh, and focus more on supply chain attacks to, to get access to cloud environments. Um, data breaches and the solar compromise credentials shows no sign of decreasing. And I think one thing I expect to see in the future is uh, entrepreneurial cyber criminals kind of offering services uh, focused on harvesting and selling just just cloud related credentials um the ransomware seems to be getting worse uh and like i said before the monitoring of the name and chain websites they're increasingly tar um, targeting and pointing out um the sensitive data stored by some companies in the cloud and and like i just said crypto jackers as well so that all sounds a bit bleak but i just think um I think as an industry, I think this companies like ourselves, like Accenture, who are um, advanced in this field and we have the resources to kind of share knowledge and best practices. I think it's up to us and companies like us to kind of just share. We need, I think everyone just needs to share knowledge, share best practices um, and just try and get everyone up to speed because, I mean, don't forget that any, any of these um, 
smaller victims could end up being like a conduit to a supply chain attack, another supply chain attack. So it's, it's all our best, all our best interest to get to get everyone up to speed. That's very true, and uh, they they do say that knowledge is power. So the more we we understand, and the more we can share all that information, it's a it's a really good idea, isn't it? Yes. Excellent. Well, we've come to the end of uh, of our presentation, and thank you so much for that today, Paul. I'll just hand over to you um, to say a last couple of words. Yeah, thanks for everyone for attending. Um, it's been a pleasure, and um, hopefully, I can uh, do some uh, some events in the future. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah, we really appreciate you doing that presentation today. So thank you to everybody who attended this presentation and we hope to see you on some of the other presentations throughout the day. So take care, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.